Chapter 1. Introduction. The Great Search. Latter-day Saint doctrines, principles, and ordinances have a unique and important history. Without studying and understanding them, it is impossible to know God's will for man, for he said, it is impossible for a man to be saved in ignorance. DNC 131.6, and the Prophet Joseph Smith explained. Dot, 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 the things of God are of deep import, and time, and experience, and careful and ponderous and solemn thoughts, can only find them out. Thy mind, O man, if thou wilt lead a soul into salvation, must stretch as high as the utmost heavens, and search into and contemplate the darkest abyss, and the broad expanse of eternity, TPJS, page 137. I advise all to go on to perfection, and search deeper and deeper into the mysteries of godliness. A man can do nothing for himself unless God direct him in the right way, and the priesthood is for that purpose. TPJS, page 364. But this search to understand the mysteries is long and challenging. There have always been confusion, discord and contradictions among those trying to interpret the gospel. Even Christ occasionally said things that seemed to be contradictory and mysterious all, the more reason for our extensive study of the background, history and meaning of these gospel doctrines and principles. The Prophet Joseph described the best method to use in learning these saving and exalting principles. When you climb up a ladder, you must begin at the bottom, and ascend step by step, until you arrive at the top, and so it is with the principles of the gospel you must begin with the first, and go on until you learn all the principles of exaltation. But it will be a great while after you have passed through the veil before you will have learned them. It is not all to be comprehended in this world, it will be a great work to learn our salvation and exaltation even beyond the grave. TPJS, page 348. It is much more vital for us to advance from the mill to the meat of the gospel than it is to advance from elementary school to high school and college. As the inspired translation of the Bible says, therefore, not leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection. Dot dot dot. Heb. 6 1. It. The meat of the gospel adds to the milk. It is not a substitute for the basic principles. However, most saints are not as iris or even capable of receiving greater light and knowledge, and are content to stay with the milk. Even the Book of Mormon had to be written with a lesser portion of the word, in order to be understood by the average reader. And now, there cannot be written in this book even a hundredth part of the things which Jesus did truly teach unto the people. But behold the plates of Nephi do contain the most part of the things which he taught the people. And these things have I written, which are a lesser part of the things which he taught the people, and I have written them to the intent that they may be brought again unto this people, from the Gentiles, according to the words which Jesus hath spoken. And when they shall have received this, which is expedient that they should have first, to try their faith, and if it shall so be that they shall believe these things then shall the greater things be made manifest unto them. And if it so be that they will not believe these things, then shall the greater things be withheld from them, unto their condemnation. Behold, I was about to write them, all which were engraven upon the plates of Nephi, but the Lord forbade it, saying, I will try the faith of my people. 3 Nephi 26 6-11 Joseph Smith could not tell even his close associates all that God had revealed to him. I heard him, Joseph Smith, say at one time when he was preaching, turning to those that sat behind him, if I should reveal to these, my brethren, who now seem to be my bosom friends, what God has revealed to me, they would be the first to seek my life. And it was so. Nancy Tracy Autobiography, BYU Transcript, page 25. Only when people make the extra effort to learn the greater principles of the gospel, do they begin to realize the tremendous value of them. Eventually they can gain a testimony of these truths which is of more value than life itself. John the Revelator wrote about saints who considered the gospel worth dying for. And they overcame him, Satan, by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. Rev. 12.11. Many thousands have endured torture, pain and death at the hands of those who oppose the gospel. The Savior also explains how valuable the gospel should be to us. Dot 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 the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man, seeking goodly pearls. Who, when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had, and bought it. Mad. 1345-46. If men have paid such a great price for the gospel in the past, shouldn't we be willing to do the same? If we expect a similar reward, we should pay the same price. The Prophet Joseph comments. Reflect for a moment, brethren, and inquire, whether you would consider yourselves worthy a seat at the marriage feast with Paul and others like him, if you had been unfaithful. TPJS, page 64. The saints generally have failed to understand the importance of the gospel restoration either for themselves, or for the great work that will result from it. As George Q. Cannon explained in 1882, the Lord, to the prophet Joseph Smith, in early revelations, told to the church, You are laying the foundation of a great work, how great you know not. And the same words are just as applicable to us today, notwithstanding the growth of the work up to the present time. We with the light we now possess even, cannot conceive of this greatness. It is not entered into our hearts, neither are we capable of conceiving of it. J.D. 23 277-278 
Brigham Young warned the saints in 1859 against placing too much importance on wealth and riches, rather than on the principles of the gospel. It also appears to me that very many of the Latter-day Saints are as far from good wholesome ideas and principles, touching their heavenly privileges, as the East is from the West. They covet the riches of this world, craving to serve themselves to satisfy the sordid disposition within them. Had they the sense of an angel, and were they in possession of mountains of gold, heaped up higher and deeper, broader and longer, than these mountains on the east and west of us, they would say, that vast amount of gold is as nothing when compared with the privilege of even living in this day and age of the world, when the gospel is preached. JD 7 173. Each of us should ask ourselves are we more concerned about gold or the gospel? Temporal wealth or eternal exaltation? Hopefully the decision has been or will be made to more fully appreciate and learn gospel doctrines and principles, to value the privilege of living at a time when the fullness of the gospel is on the earth and available to the saints of God. Since some readers may feel hesitant in delving into the mysteries, let's begin with a brief study of our responsibility in this area.